Okay, so the Yankees have signed a player. Yeah. Now the last two moves we're bringing in front office guys, Brian Sabian a few days ago and Omar Minaya today. I put out videos on both, so go take a look at them. Um, but they've just signed Delvin Perez, who's a 24-year-old infielder from Puerto Rico who bats righty, throws righty. And he was a first-round draft pick, actually, 23rd pick overall by the St. Louis Cardinals in 2016. <clears throat> so he was, like, 18 years old at the time when he was drafted. Um, but I think in a number of ways it gives the Yankees more competition in spring training, gives them more infield depth one way or another, which also, okay, increases the, uh, the ability for them to move an infielder in a trade for something else. So that if they do happen to move one of these guys, um, they have some depth to back them up. Because if they do move an infielder, they're not going to move them for another infielder. They're going to move for a pitching or an outfielder to play left field or something like that. So these are depth type moves that Cashman always makes, whether it be pitching, outfielder, or anything like that. Um, but Delvin Perez, again, it's another piece. It also gives an opportunity for you know guys like Anthony Volpe, uh, Oswald Peraza to kind of find their way a little bit. Oswald Peraza wasn't given a sample size that was b as big as Oswaldo Cabrera, so he's a little bit more time to play. And once Anthony Volpe comes up, I mean, <clears throat> giving him a chance to play as well. He's their number one prospect. So um, it's guys like this that give infield protection, give them depth, and allows them to ease some of their top prospects in instead of just throwing them to the Wolves. So... I, you know, again, it's not a sexy move. None of the moves the Yankees have made recently, particularly bringing the guys uh, Ortega or, or Calhoun for the outfield, um, not sexy, but they could be quietly impactful moves. And these are the types of moves that Cashman's known for. You know, he brings like a thousand guys for a position and lets there be a big competition um, at whatever position <laughs> they're playing. So <clears throat> this gives them more infield depth as well. And the stats aren't flashy. I mean, he batted. He had uh, 223 in 2022, had 296 at-bats, 5 homers, 33 RBIs, but had 21 stolen bases. So he's another guy who can steal the bags. And with the new base sizes coming in 2023, it's going to be more conducive to, ba to bag stealers, right? Him and uh, Peraza and, and Cabrera and IKF, Volpe, whoever. It's, it's, it creates more opportunities, and I hope the Yankees utilize that skill set more, particularly with the shift going away and, and creating more run-producing opportunities all over the place. <clears throat> and I don't, I don't see drastic changes in production, but these could be, you know, my, uh, what do you call it, minute changes that can add up, add up, and put them in a position to win games that they normally would be losing the last couple of years. So I like the move. Again, it's not sexy, but it can be quietly impactful. So um, let me know what you think of it. Um, you know, and I, again, I like the fact that the Yankees are making signings. And again, it also frees up some things you know with dj healthy and not needing surgery now you know he'll be positioned on a couple different places he could play second he could back up rizzo at first like he could do a lot of different things and at some point hopefully they'll give andres chaparro a chance too to back up or to play first or play third because he, you know, he plays both so a top infield prospect with power so and also want to thank Nathan for having me on yesterday. We interviewed him, Andres Chaparro, yesterday. So I'll link that video down below so you can take a look at it. It was a lot of fun, and um, we really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to doing it again with some other Yankee players and prospects. So, um, But also gives them room to move Glaber Torres should they want to do that for pitching uh, or something like that, right? Relief pitching, so whatever. Or an outfield as part of a trade for an outfield because the left field situation still hasn't been resolved. And again, the Yankees are doing in the outfield just like they're doing in the infield, getting a lot of depth and having not decided who they're going to go with yet. Having this much depth gives them at least more options so that if somebody really shines in spring training, they could stand out and maybe give them a chance. Or if somebody's cut from another team um, in spring training, who just, just for roster crunching reasons, who's still pretty good. And, and there's always a couple of surprise roster cuts. The Yankees could capitalize there too. So there's options that they could capitalize on. As much as we want them to trade for a, a <clears throat> top player, the cost is going to be pretty high. We know this. The options are pretty much gone in free agency. So this is going to be the route, right? Whether it be signing guys like this on minor league deals with invites to spring training or trade for somebody or somebody that might get cut during spring training for whatever reason so there's still options out there there's still six weeks plus and shout out to rc from nyc because he's always giving us the timeline how many days are left especially in the live streams on saturdays he always pops up 38 days 42 days whatever it is shout out to rc for giving us that intel we appreciate it so and we're looking forward to spring training starting but <clears throat> that's the news i got for you right now if anything else comes out in yankee land uh, and you want it i hope that you enjoy this content enough to subscribe to the channel okay not only does it mean a lot but it also helps to ensure that you don't miss anything so, and that's, I mean, again, it's my goal, you know, my, it, it's valuable to me to know 
that you're enjoying the content and you find it valuable. So it motivates me to continue to do it, and I want to continue to do that. So, and load up the comments, obviously, with your opinions. They're always welcome. Talk to you later.